Today I'm going to be dropping the tank and replacing the low pressure fuel pump on this Discovery. It had been having problems for about a day or two where it would lose power under acceleration and it would go into limp mode. It then got quite hard to start so after plugging into the code reader it was bringing up a P0087 which is low fuel pressure error code. So after checking the fuel pressure at the engine I found there was no pressure getting to the engine at all which leads me to think it has to be the low pressure fuel pump that lives in the tank. To check the fuel pressure at the engine we need to find the little trader valve on the input side of the high pressure pump. With the ignition on if we depress the valve we should see a stream of fuel. Here we're getting absolutely nothing. The fact that we have no pressure at all means either we have a leak, which we don't, or the pump is gone, or there's no power getting to the pump. If we had poor pressure it could mean a failing pump or a blocked fuel filter. So we're underneath the Jeep now, very tight on space, even though I've jacked up well. First thing we need to do is remove this dust shield that protects the drive shaft going to the back and then we need to remove three hoses at the rear of the tank the main filler neck hose just a jubilee clip and then there are two pipes further back one with a yellow clip and another with I think it's a grey clip the yellow one you can get from underneath and the next one you can put your hand in over the rear tire and it's just beside the wiring harness for the handbrake module. So we're going to try and get those all off. So we've now got our three pipes off. And the fill neck pipe removed. And we've got the skid plate or the dust cover off the drive shaft removed. We're going to remove this little gizmo at the front of the tank just because it'll be in the way when we try and drop the tank. And then we're going to slacken off the six bolts that hold the tank to the bottom of the car. We're going to put a trolley jack underneath it and drop it down just a couple of inches and check if there are any pipes still holding on. So we have the tank out now after a bit of wrestling. Looking at the pipes again, the first two we took off after the filler neck the yellow one we have to pull out this tab to release it and the grey smaller pipe we press in the two tabs either side to release that one. Moving up to the front of the tank we have three pipes. These two are the main flow and return that go onto the filter housing and there's a smaller third pipe that goes onto another device. I'm not sure what it does. Also you have a cable that goes to the handbrake, it's the manual release cable. It clips on here and here. You'll need to release that and then your six bolts and it should drop down relatively easily once you know that. Next step is to remove the five pipes that go onto the top of the pump housing. These three, these two plastic, hard plastic ones are quite awkward. You'll need three little screwdrivers to press in the prongs and they'll pull out. This one will pull off, this one has a jubilee clip and this one also has some sort of a quick connection. So I've all the pipes removed now and I've loosened the large jubilee clip. This top cap is just a sort of a split ring so we should be able to by hand, loosen it and lift it up, maybe. There we go. And now the unit just lifts out. I have to be careful to try and make this as clean as possible. I spent a while with a wire brush and the air compressor cleaning off things.
So we got the pump module out eventually. There's a green retaining band, you can just about see it in here. If we unclip that on one side it loosens the whole module and we can wiggle everything out the hole. This is the module now out. Comes with the level sensor for your fuel tank level. And this is the pickup system and the return that comes into it. And this is our pump in the middle. It's recommended on the forums that you replace the whole module with the proper part from Land Rover, but that's coming in around 400 euro plus fat. So I've gone for the pump itself, but a higher quality version than most people go for. It's 55 euro plus fat. And the problem is the pump, so I don't see the point in replacing everything else when it's just the pump that's gone. So I'm going to take this part, clean it out, and put in the new pump. The new pump comes with a strainer, so hopefully that will fit it. That will be good. Here we have the new pump and the old pump side by side. We can see just how dirty the strainer was on the old pump. That was most likely the reason it failed. It's nearly fully clogged. So either that was restricting the flow through it, or it caused it to burn out. So we're going to pop the strainer on the new one. The wiring terminals unfortunately are very very slightly differently. So I'm going to cut them both and solder them onto the original loom. And then we're going to put the module back together and pop it back in. So I have the new pump installed now. And the wired up to the connection. I cleaned out the filters in the bottom of the plastic and cleaned out all the housings and pipes and put in the new little metal gauze. So we're ready to put this back in. I have had a look around inside the tank and there doesn't seem to be any loose debris in it. So I think we're okay there. So we have our pump module back in place, everything tightened up and our pipes back on. A couple of things to check. Make sure that your float switch is parallel with the tank. The float itself should be about here. The pump sits here. Make sure it's fully seated into the housing and flush with the bottom of the tank. Check your quick connect fittings that the o-rings haven't come out and make sure everything is good and tight. We're underneath now hopefully for the final time just checking everything. There's our filler hose. This is an important cable here. It comes from the it's the manual handbrake release cable. It runs along the top of the tank. Everything else clipped in. When we're underneath, it's a good chance to check everything out. Here we can see that our the carrier bearing in the rear prop shaft is completely separated. So that'll have to be the next thing to change. So now we're going to check the Schrader valve to see if we have pressure. I have the ignition turned on. We're getting air. And a fairly steady stream of fuel coming out. I'm going to cycle the ignition again. Now we're getting a stream, just what we want to see. So that should be enough now to, for it to be able to start. So we're going to try. So we'll call that a fix. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.